Welcome back, listeners, to, to the Tattoos and Toddlers podcast, where I do whatever the heck I want on my podcast, whether or not you have a tattoo or a toddler. The, ori- the origin story of this podcast is the fact that we run our businesses and we also have other things that take our attention, whether it's children or people or caretaking for animals, anything, anything that divides our attention is what I love talking about on this podcast. Today, I have the most special guest because Sarah and I have seen each other a lot. We've looked across the room and looked at each other's hair, but this will be our first real awesome art conversation. I am so excited. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Please tell everybody about what you are doing right now and who you are. Awesome. Thank you. Um, So uh, my name is Sarah Rocca. I right now am currently under a heated blanket freezing in New Hampshire. So um, I'm looking at you in in your warm Texas weather gear and um, I'm I'm wearing a coat because it's (laughs) Um, but I am um, I've been for the last three years primarily a self-portrait artist and I have recently taken a turn and I still do self-portraiture, but I also uh, work with other clients and I do a very unique type of photography. And that is I shoot fine art portraits and fantasy portraits with my drone exclusively. So um, that's something you're definitely not going to see everywhere. And I've try to corner the market on that one. (laughs) You know, and I think that's great because there is a look to drone photography that not a lot of us, you can't emulate that in any kind of artificial intelligence whatsoever. And I think here's the cool thing about us talking today, Sarah, is that I saw you in action doing your work. And I think that for this particular conversation, I love talking about the artistic process. Now, what led you into this type of photography? Because it's like, not everybody's going to use the drone this way, but I'm fascinated on how you found your way into this. Please tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, um, I, (laughs) it was way back in 2020 when we were all stuck in our homes from the pandemic. (laughs) Um, so I live alone and um, during the pandemic, when everything went into a complete lockdown and you basically could go to the grocery store and that's all you were allowed to do, um, I started to go a bit stir crazy. I have struggled with mental health problems in 2020, did not help this at all, um, as we we all can attest to, right? So I owned this drone, very expensive drone, and I hadn't gotten a chance to really use it. It'd been sitting collecting dust and I thought I should sell it. I should sell this thing. It's worth a lot of money. Let me just, let me offload it. But as a self-portrait artist, you always want to see like, well, wait a minute, maybe maybe I can do something with this. So um, (laughs) I figured out because I didn't know anything about my drone. I figured (laughs) out that it had a self-timer. Um, function on it. And so you could set it to take basically an intervalometer. You could set it to take a picture every five seconds or every 10 seconds, and it would just shoot. So um, I decided to trot out into my backyard and um, it was summertime. So it was nice and warm up here. And I um, wrapped cheesecloth around my face because why (laughs) wouldn't I do that? And laid down on my lawn and uh, brought the drone up over me and started taking some pictures and I didn't know I was just messing around just being silly I came back inside and I looked at him and I literally just my jaw dropped because I went yeah you can't like you can't shoot this perspective you can do it with a camera on a boom but it's not quite the same nowhere near yeah yes so um then I started Googling, is anyone else doing this? You know what I mean? Like I just yeah. am Googling yes. like drone portraits. Drone, and you you definitely see people who use their drone um, to take pictures of brides and grooms. You see those lovely women lying on the beach. So there's definitely, so there were at the time in 2020, a, a few applications for it, but um, not, not like I was going to do. And that is literally, like if I had come across a bunch of people doing what I already wanted to do, I probably would have sold my drone. I probably would have been like, eh, 
you know, okay, but I saw nothing and it really excited me. And so I just kept going out into my backyard and I kept creating um, all these different works. And because it's my backyard, it's the same spot every time. I don't have the nicest lawn, so it's patchy and it's just green, you know, green and yellow. So there's not a lot you can do with it. So I really got into color processing um, in Photoshop and I can turn that one space into kind of any kind of wonderland I want. And it's been really awesome. So I shoot other people come to my backyard and, um, you know, and I'm always like, don't worry, you don't have to like get naked or do anything weird. And most of the time people are like, yeah, but could I got naked? And I'm like, yes, let's, let's do these fun things. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love it and what it's turned into. And I've, I've shot on piles of sticks, which please don't ever do that. If you're, if you're like, oh, that sounds cool. Don't, don't, it's very painful and very dangerous. Um, I've shot, you know, in my fire pit, there's no fire, but in my fire pit to create a, a really cool space. So, um, you know, I create things on the ground. I don't use a lot of props. Um, I like it to be character. You know, I, I create my character and then I like to do the coloring from that. I don't use a ton of props, but I'll use shadows. And so I get very cool shadows at different seasons, different times of day. And I've, I've definitely used that to my advantage too. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it was just the, I thank the pandemic. If honestly, if I hadn't been trapped in this house, I never would have started doing this. So I, I do have that. <laughs> I also caught something that I know that I experienced with you when we were all attempting to do pottery together. It sounds like you're more excited if nobody else is doing it and it's yeah. something unique to you that you started. It sounds well, like it's not, really excited. Not necessarily, you. yeah, that I started, but um but nobody I, else was doing it. And yeah, that was like I exciting. Like to, I like to do my own thing. So yeah. um I do get anxiety in group settings. And so um, (laughs) Jen's pottery comment was we were all at a promoting passion workshop and everybody's supposed to just be having fun and doing pottery. (laughs) And that was the most anxiety inducing like moment. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not. And we're giggling. (laughs) I know we're giggling, but this is a serious thing that people go through. And but at the same time, like I, I, but I love this about you because you were honest from the get go. You were like, you know what? I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. And, and everybody, you know, everybody, it's one of those situations where everybody's like, no, let's all do this and kumbaya. And I'm like, no, I'm going to be happier if I just kind of hang out and watch. And I honestly, I have no regrets. I was so much happier not feeling pressured to create yes. in front of other people that, in that way, because I'd never worked with clay before, I was like, this is anxiety inducing. <laughs> like, I was just like, this isn't fun for me at all, guys. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's, that's a great, I know we're, we're going, we're going exactly where I kind of wanted to go anyway, because it was like that environment that we were in was a safe space, but that doesn't mean that everybody needs to do the thing. And I think that was beautiful about that is yeah. that sometimes creating is very personal and like you were saying, you're going from self-portraiture to working with other people in this this version of things where creating is very intimate. And especially if you want to do it alone and, and private and in your own head and heart about it. I love that you stepped up and said that because it's not a, not a lot of people will do that. They'll just leave the room and they'll, you'll wonder where they went. Yeah. But I really appreciated that from you. So that's really a positive thing that I grabbed. I wanted, I know we laughed about it, but it is a thing. I think people need to be okay. If you are in a safe space, just go ahead and say, don't, I'm not doing it. Or I don't feel like this is the thing for me. And I think that that was just a beautiful moment for me. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you when, when I first met you, was it 2017? I don't even know anymore. I think it was 2017, right? So the 2017 me would not have been able to do that. Mm. I wouldn't have been able to be honest and okay. Mm. Like I wasn't just being honest. I was honest and I was like, no, I'm totally good. (laughs) Um, So this is, you know, this is the me that um, in the last year I've been able to bring forward, you know, I I've always been this silly, goofy girl. That's, that's never changed, but the self-confidence to be okay in my own skin 
yeah. is something I've been working on, I think my whole life, but I've been working on in the past year in, in really big ways, you know, where I, I just, you know, I've always wanted to have fun, crazy hair. I've wanted, always wanted to have a ton of tattoos. Yeah. Um, and I do some of it, but I'd be very safe about things. And now I'm just like, what, why am I being safe? This is my one life. Let me do it the way I want to do it um, instead of the way everybody else wants me to do it. So, oh, so I yeah. feel you. I yeah. love this. I love that. I love that we get to talk about this. This is such a great conversation of everything I've been going through as well. Yeah. Just learning how to be okay with where you are, how you are in those moments. Like even at, I'm, I've never felt more safe at promoting passion. And I sat there and I said, Oh, I'm going to do things differently. And you and I even had a conversation about it. And I had a complete meltdown the next day. Oh, no. <laughs> I almost didn't let myself have it. You know, I was like, Oh my God, why am I so like afraid to show up? Not a hundred percent. Like this is a safe space where I can like, and it's, I know we all have our spaces that we create for ourselves. Like I have a home space and we have a workspace and we have our public spaces. Not everybody's going to be open in public spaces. It's a given, right? But I love the fact that I needed to go through that to, to learn a few things myself. Mm -hmm. Like where the heck am I at right now? And I thought yeah. I dealt with that. <laughs> yeah. I just love that, that we're having this little moment here. Cause I think it's just wonderful. And I just applaud both of us for just being who we are now. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. It's well, and, and I do think I do, cause we're the same age. So I do <laughs> think, um, age has something to do with it where you, you do start to, reach a certain age and just shed layers of BS, <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that you've been carrying and you've been doing and you start realizing why have I been doing this or why, why do I feel like I have to go along with it? Because mm -hmm. 50 other people in the room are creating <laughs> clay works and I'm literally the only one walking around like, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> and and you, I start to say, you know, what's great is that even though I sat down and created I actually had much more fun looking at everybody's creations yeah. on the counter. It was almost yeah. like having a miniature art show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it was, it was very, um, it was very fun, but it's also, it's not easy for me to do those things. It's not easy for me to um, wear the lipstick I want to wear, dress the way I want to dress. It's, at, at, it, it's things that I'm like, okay. Like, this is what I want to do. Am I comfortable doing it? Because I do have that voice in the back of my head, like, oh my God, someone your age shouldn't do this. Uh, <laughs> you know, those societal yep. things that we, you know, um, and I don't, I don't want to say we as women, but I feel like women have a lot of them, you know, put upon us and you're supposed to be a certain way. And, and like, you know, this podcast is tattoos and in, in toddlers. I definitely have tattoos. I do not have toddlers. I do not have children. And, you know, that in, in and of itself, there's a lot of stigmas with with yep. that so just living the way that I want to live um it's not an easy thing and and so whenever someone compliments me on it I'm like thank you but it's a work in progress like please know none always. of this is easy to me <laughs> always and I think that's the beautiful thing about our self-realizations about ourselves and and whether or not we get the chance to communicate that to other people, sometimes we don't need to. And sometimes we get to have these conversations about, you know what, this is where I'm at right now. I had a baby at 40 and there are so many stigmas with that. Just don't even get me started. But it's like, there's two different worlds of you need to fit these 10 categories to be considered a mother or these 10 categories to be considered a woman. I just, I'm kind of over all of that yeah. now, be, just because of, you know, I was raised around a lot of wonderful, loving people, but I also know that I had a period of time where short hair didn't seem like, oh, well, that's not a woman thing. Or, you know, even like the fact that I buzz my hair off now, it's so wonderful and free. <laughs> I have instant air conditioning. It's fantastic. Yeah. But it took, you know, how, how long did it take us to get here? It's everybody's yeah. different. Everybody's path is different. Today, I actually did talk a lot about pathways in general. And as artists, don't we just love the visuals of what does a pathway look like? 
how does that apply to my life? Like I was thinking about, okay, I was on the beach one time that had rocks. I had, it was on a beach that had sand. I was on a paved street. I was on a rocky street. I was cutting my way through the jungle, kind of like walking through just bushes of bushes of leaves. How do, how do we define our pathways? It's like, it's endless opportunities to define that path. And I think that some of us, maybe we're just so stuck in that we can't veer off the path that maybe we just needed to walk a different path altogether that looked differently than what we thought. So I just like the fact that we've arrived. We've arrived yeah. in this path, whatever this is right now, we're kind of enjoying it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. I'm definitely enjoying it. I've, I'm, you know, it's, it's as difficult as things are. I've also enjoyed myself in the last couple of years of really, I feel like kind of coming out of my I'll say out of my shell, which people think of that as being, you know, shy to not, I, I'm not shy, but, um, but, you know, coming out of just the shell of what I once was to who I've always wanted to be. Um, and a lot of that is just physically. And so now I'm working on the mental pieces to, to reinforce all that good stuff. <laughs> no, I think that's great because it all, it all ties together. It's all connected. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be doing this podcast if I haven't learned that I actually have a dang voice, you know, it's like, I, oh, I can actually talk to things, talk to people, have conversations. And it's not a bad thing. It's actually a great thing. That's just why I'm obsessed with travel sometimes is like, I love traveling. So I meet people of all walks of life. And there's so many people in this world. <laughs> I know, I know. So many. <laughs> and so many artists and all artists approach things differently. But I think that the one thing that brings us all together is creativity and communication. And we all want to say something and we yeah. all want to express something, whether or not it comes out in a meaningful way. Or I've, I was just thinking about this today of how many times people walked up to me and said, well, I just don't get it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, I smiled. And then a few months later I was hurt. Like I was like, yeah. okay, wait, um, I want to be seen. And I think I'm putting myself out there, but they don't understand or try to get to know me to understand the deeper parts of myself. And that's, that's fine. That was a me thing then. And I was just reminiscing about that today for some reason about all the people that said, I don't get it. And I love you, but I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got, um, I got, I've gotten a lot of that over the years. I, you know, or people that will just, I, it's actually become my favorite thing when someone <laughs> looks at my work and I can see them looking at my work and they're going and they're trying to work it out and they're like trying to form a smile, but they're like, eh. and I'm like, this is the best I've confused you. Maybe I've disgusted you. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you just hate it, but I, I met someone this past week and um, I was talking to this lovely woman and, you know, she's looking at my work and she's like, people will pay you to do this. <laughs> and it was just like that. And I very excitedly was like, yeah, they will. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so, so a lot of people don't, don't get it. Um, but I think that's the great thing is I used to, it, some things do hurt me, like rejection, you know, when you get rejected by of course, um, like a million galleries that you submit to. But when it's individual people and they don't get it, <laughs> I don't care anymore. I used to, but now I'm just like, yeah, it's not for you. It's all right. Like, it's not for everybody. Um, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, this wasn't about, like, I was a new mom. It was 2017. Oh. And I was like, uh, or 2018, 2017, 2018. And I was just, I was having fun, like genuine fun yeah. creating, right? And I'm satisfied with my work. And then somebody comes up and says, well, I just don't get it. And I'm just <laughs> like, um, I smile. I did the smile. And then I was yeah. like, wait, wasn't I hurt by that? I don't know. But yeah, I'm with you. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a process of, I feel like it's a rite of passage as an artist yeah. in general. Like how many times have we seen our peers do this where they create what they genuinely love and like and put out into the world and just most of the, most everybody doesn't get it. Yeah. But the satisfaction that you created it. I mean, I was talking today about just overcoming fear in general. I was like, if I went out and created the thing, even though it wasn't perfect or it wasn't um, up to par with somebody else's standards and lists, the fact that I created was my win. The fact yeah. that I created is my success. 
Yes. You know, yes. and I was just like, that's some, sometimes that's where I'm at. I'm like, I just went out and did the thing. Yeah. That's a, so I, my latest image that I just posted, <laughs> the write-up is all about that. Like oh, I I'm have to go I, look. I just created and it's just okay. But I, you know, it's, it's when I'm going through times where I'm having a hard time creating, I'm having a hard time feeling motivated, feeling that creativity. So I'll create, I'll just, I'll just create. And I may think it's garbage, but I will go do it. And there's a lot of shoots that never even see the light of day because I tried it um, and I hated it or I couldn't turn it into what I wanted to, but I went and created. And and that's what kind of keeps me going. And when I'm feeling low and I create the five minutes, because let's face it, that's all it takes me <laughs> right now to, to do my shoots, but the five minutes that I'm... I'm shooting that I'm there that I'm in that moment of the best five minutes of my day. Um, because it, you get into people call it flow. You can call it whatever you want. You get into that state where there's literally nothing else happening on earth when I'm creating. Um, I am very focused and I'm in my character and I know what I'm doing. Um, and if people don't get it, that's okay. Then I, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, my art's not for you. <laughs> yeah and okay <laughs> like I, I don't really care um you know yeah. does it mean and and people in my family don't get it like there's people that just don't get it and but they're supportive and and I'm like and that's really cool like you don't you don't you don't have to get it and I was actually just talking to a friend um this week and I said you know, I said, it, we're talking about how people don't really, how people don't necessarily understand my work and have not over the years. And I said, I could create the way that everybody else is creating. Mm -hmm. I could do that. I could get better at it and better at it. And I could do that. I would hate myself because I'd have no passion in it, but I could do that. But then I'd be just like everybody else. And, and that I don't want to be. I, you know, I want to do my own weird, unique thing. And I always have, even before drone photography, I was in a little bit of a, a more dark art, weird realm. And a lot of people were like, huh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, right. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, this is interesting. You know, um, I even, I have to tell you the best comment early, early on when I would just do stuff for shock value. Um, an old family friend that grew up with me <laughs> saw my brother out somewhere and she had seen my art online <laughs> to my brother. And this is the best comment I've ever gotten in my life. I wouldn't change it for the world. She's just like, your sister does some weird photography. Is she okay? And <laughs> like, that is to me, like it was the best compliment because I was like, that's the reaction I had been going for. And I achieved it with that one comment. Uh, is she okay? And it's like, no, she's not. And then my brother probably <laughs> shugged it off. Like, oh, well, she's weird. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's the lane I've, I've always loved being in. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I, I know that my, my perspective has shifted over the years. My work has changed over the years and, and, um, and I love talking about it. I love creating however I want to create, you know, what was interesting about this last promoting passion is that that whole excursion trip, I didn't create until the last 10 minutes. And that was so odd for me because wow. you know how everybody was just wrong for like an hour and a half and I was like they've got like 15 20 ideas and I walked in with nothing and I walked over to Quinn's stash of props <laughs> and I was like this yellow slicker needs to this needs something to happen <laughs> and then I found yellow yarn and I said this needs to go with it <laughs> That's awesome. But I had no idea where it was going until the last few minutes where I said, you know, I, I called the model over and we, I've been waiting my turn. And, and then all of a sudden Brooke was available and I was like, oh, well, let's just go off into the woods for 10 minutes. And that's not my normal MO. Yes, I do yeah. short photo shoots, but I just, the opportunity just presented itself. And I was like, you know what, this feels like it's right. 
this feels like everything has come together and I was patient enough for it. And yeah. if y'all have known me for five minutes, I am not the most patient person. I really just want to, I, 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 I get anxious about people that can't make a decision and just go play with an idea. They have to have it all mapped out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, just go play, do it. <laughs> I don't map anything out. So. <laughs> I can't do drawings. All. I can have, I can have a detail out an idea, but I usually make up the story afterwards. You know, it took me yep. a few years to get, to be okay with even that creative process. You know, even within photography and the art world, we have people that give us recipes and formulas and, and ways to create that if we feel like we deviate from the path or the formula that it's wrong. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I think you're probably similar to me. Like we're, we don't care anymore. Yeah. We're do what we want to do and how we want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I know my outfit and my character. So I know yeah. my attitude. And if I'm working with someone else, we have that kind of mapped out and I'll figure out if I'm working with other people, I do figure out poses for them ahead of yes. time. Because when you lie down and I challenge anyone lie down and take a good picture of yourself from above. It's oh, not, yeah. it looks everything. That's a whole other world of where you think yeah one thing will work and it doesn't right yeah like yeah it's it yes yeah. so um but when i'm when i'm by myself i just have a general character and i do the shoe and then i'll come inside and i'll start playing with color because i don't even know what my color is going to be yeah. um sometimes i think i know what it's going to be never ends up that color when i'm like i'm going to do all red and then i'll come in and i'm like oh my god this looks great in blue um and i'll just switch the whole thing up so oh yeah i did try mapping it out i tried drawing my ideas i tried sketching down you know writing everything down i did that for probably the first 6 months of my drone work mm. and then it all went out the window because the way i work is i literally i'm sitting where i usually stand and work there's a huge picture window I look out it and I'll see my yard a certain way or shadows um, from the trees. Yeah. And I'll literally be like, I have to get out there right now. BRB, got to go. <laughs> now, I work from home. So I have the luxury to be like, got to go. And it's cool. <laughs> Let me go. Um, or my lunch break. Um, I've shot a lot of lunch break sessions, guys. Um, but awesome. uh, yeah, I, I just kind of spur of the moment. I get it in my head. And if it's in my head, I have to get it out like as soon as possible. Like, or it starts to eat away at me. Like you were going to shoot this. You were going to shoot. Yeah. This. And no matter how many times I've emailed myself that same idea, I keep it as a brand new email. So I see the, the header <laughs> that says, go do this idea, uh, yeah. whatever the idea is. And until I do it, I don't feel like I can move forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel be something as silly as what I did with these little glass pebbles. I was like, go do a self portrait with these little glass pebbles underneath an acrylic sheet of plastic. Yeah. I was like, okay, brain, I'll go do it. <laughs> you know what? It was so much fun. So yeah. great. You know, I think our Technicolor hair does work in our favor a lot of different times too for yes. the art. So, you know, and not everybody changes their hair color when they're doing self-portraits, but I certainly don't. I, I embrace the color. Um, as we are starting to round out our conversation, I really love how this has gone. I love talking about our creative paths and processes. I really want to dive into one of your tattoo stories too, as we're talking <laughs> about creativity. So I know that not everybody's going to see right away, but she's got a really nice big one across her chest and shoulder. You got to tell me more about this tattoo. Tell me all okay. about it. Okay. So this, this is my Raven, mm -hmm. um, that is, is across here. And the the reason why I love well so I love this one so much I I love ravens they're incredibly intelligent animals mm -hmm. like they live so long they're very cool looking um they can mimic sounds they're they're loyal they they're just um they're way more than like any other kind of bird like crows and ravens are are pretty spectacular so uh, I I got this raven um an artist from Belgium did it and mm -hmm. he was incredible he was in Boston traveling artist so we found a raven that we liked he stenciled that on me and then after the stencil was on he was like okay stand and I was like okay and I stand <laughs> up and he free hand drew all of the branches and I literally stood there and John I was like I am a canvas this is amazing I have never felt so cool in my entire life so I got this tattoo 
And it's very striking. Um, people always comment on it all the time because it peeks out from any shirt that I'm wearing. I was going to say not only the details, but the creepy crawly branches that I see. It's it's right in that spot of no matter what shirt you wear, it's going to be like, bing. Yes. And, and I love it. It is my favorite, favorite piece. The reason why um, <laughs> I love the stories, though, is because everybody asks me, um oh so so why why a raven and i have to assess in my head or i used to assess in my head now i just now i just blurt stuff out but i will <laughs> assess in my head who am i talking to does the person seem really normal <laughs> because there's two answers i give oh the my gosh for me answer is oh they're really cool they're very intelligent i love ravens and they do the whole spiel the real answer that I love to give people or I love to freak people out with is I'm like, did you know they're the harbingers of death? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I love it. Like whenever you're watching, so any movie you ever watch now, TV shows, like especially things around like um, Vikings did this a lot. Whenever there was anything around like death or Odin, um, they, it was always Ravens. <laughs> you see them, uh, you see them in Harry Potter movies. And I just... I love to say to people, well, they're the harbingers of death, <laughs> because to me, that's the perfect Sarah answer because of my kind of dark, weird persona. But people will look at me and be like, okay. okay. <laughs> so um, I do have that second answer where I think, am I going to really freak them out? I'll say that. And then I'll be like, I mean, they're really cool. <laughs> I mean, if you're just adding to the fact that I just had a whole conversation earlier this afternoon about The Crow, the movie, okay? Yeah. Because yeah. it's the same thing. Like, he came back out of the grave, and guess who was there as his guide and, and sort of his power yeah. was that bird. And it was so funny that... Um, so I was like, I was telling him, I said, this, somebody called me the undertaker and I was really offended because <laughs> I am the crow. I am Eric Draven. <laughs> And yes, I may look like a mime, but am I dressed like a mime? I don't yes. think so. No. But it's the same thing. Like, it's like being okay with telling that story. I love the fact that you do have two answers because yes. that's such a reality. <laughs> sometimes we can't, we just, sometimes we don't have it within us to show all of who we are. We almost feel like it's almost too weird. And then some days we're like, yeah, I'm just going to let it fly. <laughs> well, and it's more for... Do I think the person can handle what I'm about to say? To right. Them? Because I used to just okay, blurt it out. And then so many people were like mortified that I said that. And I'm Aww. like, oh, is that a weird thing? <laughs> I didn't think that was a weird thing. Like, I like de death. Yes, death is a big deal. But at the same time, I don't shy away from, you know, the representations of it. Um, you know, so I, I just... I do have those are my my funniest. I mean, I I have I have a lot of different tattoos and stuff. Yeah. That's you know, and they do represent different things for me. This this was just like they're so cool. I I love them, so I, I got this piece. But you know, and it's very I'm very visible. Like I've had many discussions with people that like for me, most of my most of my tattoo life has been all non visible to the public. Like yeah. literally. And then I went last fall and I was like, oh, let me get something that's, rep, you know, visible. And then, of course, Vegas, I got the $10. It's hard to do. Oh, um, there it is. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> I did like the $10 tattoo thing where you go to the tattoo parlor and you just do a whim decision. And it was the greatest thing ever. And I got a little alien ship. And but I do I do have this theory about people with tattoos. There's some days where you're just like you're a normal person. You don't necessarily we're not doing it for attention. We're doing it for expression. And yeah. some people, like I've noticed a lot of my tattooed friends, they just really don't, they don't really want to talk about it. You have to go ask them about it sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't walk around going like, well, I got, well, this. look at my tattoo. You know? <laughs> um, but you know, I used to, so I have a ton on my back because I would hide them. Then I started getting them, um, on my legs or on my ribs. So places you really can't see. Yeah. Um, and then once, once I, I got this one, I kind of loosened up about it because yeah. this was always pretty visible. And then I, I got here, you can kind of see when yeah, I moved I to New it. Hampshire, this yeah. is my, I moved to New Hampshire. So, um, and then once I got this one on my arm, I was like, oh my God, cover me. Um, oh God, I keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. And 
you know, I had one over here on this forearm, but yeah. the other forearm felt naked. So I had to just get it. So this is kind of mirror it. No, I love that. I love that because there is something about having visible and non-visible tattoos. And I have just now come into the visible world as of a year ago. So it has been something, <laughs> this is all transition. And as we round out our conversation in less than two minutes, what should we leave people with today? Obviously, visibility is a big thing for us as artists and also expression. What what should we leave with them with today, Sarah? Um, start to learn who you are and start to be okay with that person in public. That's that's my biggest thing. No matter how old you are, how young you are, start that journey because it's it's gonna be awesome. I think that is a beautiful way to round out this episode, everyone. Thank you, Sarah, for coming on today. I know that it's a unique scenario where, you know, the tattoos and toddlers things is a little weird, but you know what? You We all embrace the weird here. Yeah. Um, I am not in any kind of box. I don't subscribe to labels. And I genuine conversation is all I'm after on this podcast. So thank you again for coming in and sharing pieces of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I've loved talking to you. I'm All right. Until the next episode, everyone. <laughs>